know what well, I mean? my here's my thing. But yeah. see, so when they did portray in the sense of the uh, um, not doing anything, is crazy because how can you be out there that long and not do anything? I'm Zachary Fowler with Fowler's Makery Mischief, and you might recognize this guy, Dan Wallack. He was out there on a loan as well, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his time out there. Yeah, so uh, it was a pretty crazy experience, I mean, for the most part, to go out there and just number one to be chosen for the show, uh, considering how much goes into just to get to the point of you're one of the ten contestants. So uh, that was interesting and just super exciting to begin with. And... Uh, there's some mom there's some moments in time you remember now that it is about what a year uh, since we've been out there. I guess we were out there uh, this time last year, so uh, it seems like it wasn't that hard. You know, sitting back now, you're like, oh man, I could did this or did that. But uh, everything's always easier when you look in hindsight. Uh, when you're sitting here now, well fed and uh, clean, and you have nice firewood laying around, so. Uh, moments for me that I remember the most uh, throughout the whole thing was the initial just flying in. I was never on a helicopter before, honestly. And uh, when you're flying over the mountains and you're just you're trying to take it all in, and you're also trying to keep your your uh, wits about you because you know you're getting dropped off to this super intense adventure. So it's a pretty crazy thing. So that was huge and. Uh, Getting dropped off, them leaving, and you're like, man, here I am alone with all this camera equipment is quite crazy. So I really uh, eased into it. I didn't run around and do too much at the beginning. I uh, was pretty mellow for the most part. I uh, made sure that my basic needs were met. So I had my fire, shelter, water thing going, and then uh, it becomes a food, a food thing. And I think just about everybody on the show would agree with that, that over time it becomes can you sustain yourself with food? And that's a daily adventure in itself. So if you're either setting traps or you are setting out your fishing lines or recovering fishing lines or trying not to lose hooks or getting snag lines, that's just a constant fight every day and battle every day. So, uh, which leads me into my next moment, uh, moment that you know always sticks close to me is when I had a nice big trout uh, out in the lake and it was all tangled around a uh, log and I thought I'm not letting this thing go so in I went that was that was absolutely awesome to go and do that and I actually did that two more times throughout my stay there because uh, where my fishing spots were I had to get the line out further that's where it seemed to do a little bit better but the fish would get on the line and pull right to the uh, overgrowth and the deadfall that was in the water and it get tangled up so I went in a couple times to do that and as the season went on it was getting a little bit colder so that was something that uh, I remember all the time was doing that but it really you know the struggle for food looking back now and it's it's so strange because now even now I go to refrigerator and I think man like it's just right there for us but before when you're out there uh, living like that, that's all it's about, is you're just looking for food, 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 food. So that's a crazy thing. Now, as it went on, uh, I wish I would have had some more encounters with some boar or anything like that, which I didn't. I didn't have any even passing through. I had no signs of boar in my area. So uh, looking back, I wish that that would have happened because that would have been absolutely awesome to go and do that at the time. But I think now that I can sit back and think about the show as you get more and more food deprived you your way of thinking changes so things that and I don't think it's always for the worse you're just in a different mode you're in survival mode more than you are in anything else so your actions are more precise and you're thinking about things maybe a little bit more clearly at times and in other times you're not thinking as well so uh, that really affects life so much but uh, that I mean it was the whole thing was awesome overall, and uh, I'm happy I did it. I'd definitely do it again in a heartbeat because that was a great experience to go through. And I really love now that it's done, uh, not only because I'm fed now, but because I uh, can share a lot of that with people, either um, just hanging out at camp with me or if it's um, you know somebody searching out for more advice or... Uh, some skills, I can share that with them and really relate stuff back. There's a lot of things 
we do in the survival and bushcraft community that are, uh, in a sense, novelty type skills because if it was a true situation, some of that stuff you wouldn't apply. But uh, it's good to be able to see both realms of the world and see how that works. So I love to add that, be able to give back in that sense. Because how many people get to go out, live by themselves in the bush with nothing, basically, and uh, get to film it all and then watch it over and over again. So it was a definitely cool experience for sure. Yeah, what's the question you're most asked by people about the show? Number one, I would have to say how much weight I lost. Number two, they're like, would you do it again? Number three, the most bizarre thing ever is every time I talk to like a group of people, somebody will be like, well, what kind of underwear do you wear? And then I'm always like, do you mean now or the show? Like it just, it's so in left field, it's crazy. Um, you wear it, tell them it's a zebra striped thong. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm always pull, like, pull that's where I'm at now. So now I'm like, well, I wear Calvin Klein's now, but for the show, and I go in this big spiel about underwear. So it's just, it's, it's, that's bizarre to me. That is very bizarre. I didn't think underwear were that much of a game changer, but I mean, they might be. I don't know. That might be a game changer. How much did you lose? 54 pounds. Yeah, 54 pounds while I was out there. Did it feel good to be lighter or debilitating? Um, at first, I was feeling good because uh, my weight will fluctuate in general. I normally weigh about 240, right in that, the 240 range. But I get on kicks where I'm getting running and uh, like endurance type training. So I'll drop down, my weight will drop down to around 215. Uh, and then there's times that I'm lifting real hard and I'll bulk up to 250, 260. So uh, I always like feeling lighter. Even if I'm lifting, I always like to feel trimmed out. So when I first got out there, I felt good all trimmed out. I didn't feel like, uh, like I'm a mess. But I could tell I hit a certain point when I ran out of belt. It, literally, when I ran out of my holes in my belt, that's when I was like, I am not feeling good. And then I kept straining muscles because I had no protein. So I would do like my sleeping bag. If I would like reach and pull, I'd strain my triceps or snap and firewood. I don't have any wood here to snap. Yeah, so say I grab this thing and I'm like, you know, we normally do that all the time and we throw the wood in the fire. Uh, just little sticks that were harder, I'd do that. I strained both my biceps were strained. My one tricep was strained. And then in my down in my abdominal area, I strained an ab. And uh, like down in whatever it would be, down through there. And that was brutal. So that's when I was like, I know I'm losing a lot. Then when I got to the hotel, after I came out, when I took my shirt off, because you don't see yourself. I don't know how you felt, but I didn't like, I wasn't, I would get changed or do whatever I had to do. But when I took my shirt off, I was like, holy smokes, I'm a mess. Like I looked crazy. I look like a crackhead. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy for sure how bad I looked when I came out. Yeah. So yeah, when I ran out of belt loops, that was it. I hit that last one. I was like, all right. And then I was going to punch more. And then I was just flipping my belt over to just keep my pants tighter. And uh, that's when I really, so I don't know. I would say probably when I got under 200 pounds is yeah. when, because uh, I went in, I was 235 when I went in. They weighed us right at the, the medical check before we left. I was 235, so. What did you eat the whole time you were there? What was your whole entire, what was your entire diet basically? Um, how many fish, yeah. squirrels, birds? Yeah, so while I was out there, I had traps set for some birds. No luck with the birds. So I lived on fish. I had nine fish while I was there. So it was just spaced out. Uh, initially, I was having a tough time finding bait. And then I finally got a sweet spot that I would dig at every day with a big digging stick. And uh, I was getting grubs out of that constantly. So and then I would uh, store my little area that I'd keep extras back because they'd fall off the hook and stuff like that so uh yeah so just fish that's it uh the 10 items you brought were there any that you found that you wish you had brought something different or useless no i was happy with every item i brought looking back now though um i probably would have switched out my felling axe i had a full-size felling axe so 36 inch handle 4.2 pound head i think's on that one it was fine at the beginning for what I needed it for, but then as the time went on, I kept looking for my smaller axe. I usually carry a smaller, um, like forest type axe, 
and uh, just to process everything with, because I wasn't cutting any more lumber and things like that. Then there was enough wood around that I didn't have to worry about. So I would have swapped my ax out. But uh, other than that, I was pretty happy with everything. There's nothing I really thought that, hey, I'm not going to need this or if I was going again I wouldn't take and it's really I mean that's environmental you know of course what you would take anywhere don't for me at least because if I went somewhere else if it was going to be extremely cold maybe I, and I knew that going in uh if I knew it was all right it's cold there year round or something I'd probably lose the hammock and uh pick something else in place of that but yeah um how about your your clothes and your shoes and all that, they all stand up to the test of Patagonia or does some of that have any? All my clothing and footwear was on point. Uh, Cause I use that stuff all the time when I'm out in the woods. So I didn't like go and buy something new. Everything I used is what I took out with me. So I was happy with everything. The only thing were my thermal, my thermals. I had a wool base layer and a uh, pair of thermals and the thermals, they were older when I took them. I should have bought probably new ones of the same brand, but the elastic in them like was gone within days. It just, I don't know. It was like, and they're just hanging on me. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I had a piece of paracord holding the waist up because the elastic blew out. So that was it. If I went out today, what would I do differently? I would have to say that um, I would really initially up front put a lot more time in looking for like larger game. Like I like go like, really get into that because when I first I thought fishing wise was going to be a little bit different because around here if you go anywhere that there's trout fishing there's all kind of other fish you can get to so I didn't think I'm like what kind of lake only has trout and that it was that lake so uh I would have went out early when I had a lot more energy and stamina and really tried to track down game because the fishing ended up not producing for me as well as I wish it would have. So that's probably what I would have changed up. Your survival tactic um, mm -hmm. was very different from mine, you know? Yeah. I, I was all about like kind of homestead the situation and just make, make, make and keep myself busy. Yeah. And uh, they the show actually portrays, you know, Fowler versus Dan. Yeah. And uh, it, it seemed uh, very, you did things very differently, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what was your survival tactic when you went into this? Like, it really initially was fi was uh, fire, shelter, water kind of thing. If I can get that established, I'll be good. And that came very easily. And I think, uh, I mean, that wasn't a problem at all. So then it became a food thing. So uh, I drug everything out. So it was, I mean, I didn't lay. That's one thing. I never laid around. I would get up. Every day at the same time every day. I'm going to say it was probably about 10 o'clock. And I'd lay back down at night every night around 8. That was my normal schedule. So, uh, and I would go by when the sun came up and the birds were out compared to when the sun was going down, how long I'd sit by my fire at night. Uh, I, just, I just was very, very slow at stuff. I didn't push myself to do anything too quick at all. So I would, my shelter, I worked on my shelter for three weeks until it was finally complete the way I wanted it. And then I put another week and a half in building just a debris bed inside it. So there was no urgency with anything. So it was very slow paced. But I knew that because I wasn't getting food. So when you're not getting food in, there's, I mean, you can't just keep going and going and going and run on nothing. Even if you're 100 pounds, you would still need, I mean, you need some kind of caloric intake mm -hmm. to keep pushing yourself, you know? No, well, mean, my, here's my thing. But yeah. see, so when they did portray in the sense of the... Um, not doing anything is crazy because how can you be out there that long and not do anything? 